God. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Together Again in the studio with artist Cynthia Farrell Johnson. I'm Lisa Martin with Silver Spring Town Center. I'm so happy to see so many of you joining us for, for this program. Cynthia is a beloved, beloved artist in our community, and we finally got the chance to spotlight her work on this last day of June. Um, and speaking of which, this is our end of our fiscal year, and we are gratefully accepting donations of any amount at our website, silverspringtowncenter.com, and just click the contribute button, and that will help us continue to bring over 120 free arts and entertainment programs and events throughout the year, including programs like this, our Silver Spring Blues Festival, which I hope you've, you were able to enjoy with us, and Blues Week, and other programs. Some programs we have coming up, our next Zoom is actually with another artist, jewelry artist, um, Elaine Robnett Moore, who returns to talk about her book, Dancing Out Loud, Thoughts on Navigating the Rhythms of Life. And that is on Monday, July 11th at 7 p.m. And then we have our next art salon on Wednesday, July 13th at 5 p.m. At, at El Golfo Restaurant. And we are also uh, having concerts there at El Golfo on Wednesday nights, 6 to 8 p.m. with an array of music um, and some comedy shows as well. So on the 11th, we'll have uh, a youth jazz ensemble performing. Um, so I hope you can join us then, as well as uh, for Twilight Tuesdays, which we continue every Tuesday on Veterans Plaza. And we are doing more in the way of dance and other activities on the plaza. We have uh, salsa or other Latin dance every first and third Tuesday. So this Tuesday night will be our first Tuesday of the month with uh, dance in time and AM salsa. So I hope you can join us. We also have an interesting program coming up later in July, Monday, July 25th, the numbers game in the Burbs, rac Racketeering in Montgomery County with historian David Rotenstein, PhD. So that should be a very interesting uh, program on Monday, uh, July 25th at 7 p.m. I hope you can join us. All of our events are made possible with generous support from Montgomery County, United Therapeutics, the Arts and Humanities of Montgomery County, Montgomery College, Maryland State Arts, and many others. And now um, let's get to the program with uh, together again in the studio with Cynthia Farrell Johnson. Cynthia has been an artist her entire life, and she is also, um, also a US diplomat who served uh, in various places in the world, including West Africa, Central and South America as well as here in the nation's capital. Um, and in addition to being an artist and inspired by the vibrant cultures that she took part in as, as a diplomat and, and also just growing up in, uh, in Brooklyn. And so Cynthia has a, a very vibrant background and has traveled extensively. So it's reflected in her in her wonderful work, which I'm sure you'll enjoy. We are recording this session. And also, Cynthia welcomes your comments and questions throughout the program. So feel free to, to just jump in with a comment or question along the way. And now I turn it over to artist Cynthia Farrell Johnson. Take it away, Cynthia. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you for the invitation to share my art this evening. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in. This first painting on the slide was uh, inspired by a spiritual, Mighty Pretty Meeting by the Waterside. Uh, music has always been an important part of my life. And so in 2010, I decided to do a series inspired by the songs that my father sang, Arthur Farrell. Mighty Pretty we Meeting in the Waterside was one of the spirituals from Paul Robeson's repertoire that he sang. And the upbeat tempo 
always reminded me of uh, gospel songs and tent revivals. And uh, the scene that I depicted was also inspired by different places I lived in West Africa and in Panama by the water's edge and the beaches where people would often gather. So I just enjoyed experimenting with acrylic paint and dripping and just creating a scene that uh, celebrated that song. Uh, the next uh, painting I'd like to share uh, is the, the three paintings go to the theme of tonight's program. It shows different pieces from different times. The very first one is a July 4th uh, reunion. That one I did back in 2006. And the theme of tonight together again, after we've all been uh, in COVID lockdown for way too long, it's so tonight we're, these images are celebrating the ability to gather together. And uh, so that one is from around 2006. And the yarn shop was done probably a few years after that as a sketch, but I didn't actually paint it until last year when uh, we were all sort of closeted. So I just pulled out all the old sketches I hadn't worked on and started painting them. The third piece, Embrace, that is part of a series that I've been working on for quite some time called Words to Live By. And that is gonna be featured in my 2023 calendar that I'm working on right now. Um, I've just about finished all the images and need to send it to the printer for the design work. Mm -hmm. These paintings, all of these paintings are in gouache, which is an opaque water-based paint. And that's my favorite medium because it reproduces bright and I love bright, vibrant colors. I was introduced to gouache when I was in high school. I attended High School of Art and Design in New York City, which is a commercial art high school. And I was an advertising and display arts major. So we did a lot with gouache paint and I really like the effects that it can give. Other than gouache though, I also work in acrylic. I do mixed media pieces and even sometimes some found objects that I'll do as part of a painting. Okay. All of these paintings interpret the theme of coming together and um, the next slide also celebrates community and caring for each other. This one, again, inspired by the spirituals my father sang. This one, Give Me Your Hand, is about how we need to look out for each other, care for each other, and help each other whenever we see a need. The, this, this next one, mothers to me are the unsung heroes of so many families. When everyone else is asleep, oftentimes the moms are up working into the wee hours of the morning doing whatever they need to do to keep the family business running. So I wanted to do something that celebrated hardworking mothers, whether they're working outside the home or working inside the home. Mother's work is, is never done. I see in the chat that Cindy went to art and design too. So art and design alone. Okay, so this, this painting in 2019 with all of the uh, chaos and craziness that was going on in the country, I decided to shift my focus from some of the scenes that I was uh, focusing on and doing mainly to uplift and celebrate people or things. And I wanted to pay more attention to words and what we say to each other and how we say it to each other. So I decided to start this series called Words to Live By. And the first series that I did was for the 2020 calendar. And 
one of the words that ended up being really popular, uh, it, people bought the print or the cards, was justice. And it was ironic that the calendar month that I decided to use for justice was June of 2020. And originally I decided to use justice for June, for the month of June, because so often fathers aren't really given the accolades that they deserve, especially African-American fathers. And so I just wanted to give a shout out for justice for all the black fathers who work so hard and are often not recognized for all that they do. And so it was very ironic that on Memorial Day weekend uh, with the murder of George Floyd, when justice was, when people turned over the calendar and saw justice, they said, how did you know this was going to be such an important word for this month? So I always jokingly say, well, that's what the spirit told me to do. And so that's what I did. So I've been doing words to live by calendar since 2020. I like the way the image of the wave because it it's some it kind of speaks to the ebb and flow of the tides of justice. Exactly. And also there's that verse from Amos about justice rolling down. So mm -hmm. those were all the things that came to mind when I when I did that particular piece. And and Juneteenth is also right, right. But back in 2020, there there was not it was just the beginning of the rumblings of people wanting to recognize and celebrate Juneteenth. So it just ended up being a really good word for that month. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which brings us to voting. Because of all what was going on, and there were all these uh, organizations that were asking people to send postcards to encourage people to vote. I decided to do a postcard that I could use when I did my um, participation in the postcard programs. And uh, I also did it as a note card for people who just wanted to use it for whatever reason. And uh, while my focus has always been on trying to do create works that would uplift in 2020, it seemed like we needed to take it a step further and be more intentional and advocate for people taking advantage of the opportunity to exercise this right that so many folks fought and died for. And I've always been distressed that the voting, the, the percentage of the population that votes has been so low in this country when folks have struggled mightily to be able to do that. So I decided I needed to do a, a vote card and, and that's how this ended up coming into being. This was also for the 2020 calendar and the title of it is The Power of Love. And it's probably tied with justice as being one of the more popular images and note cards from that series. And I, it took a long time to finish it because of all the detail work, but it, I wanted to show how it, if you just start off with one sprig of love, it can grow and spread. And that's what we need to focus on these days, ways in which we can make this place a little bit more humane, this planet that we're living on a little more livable. People need to be a little bit more lovable and loving. <laughs> so this, this has proven to be a, a popular image. And um, again, just inspired by the need for all of us to do a little bit better. This painting, was created because of my frustration with how so many of our fellow citizens don't either appreciate or understand the concept of systemic racism and how 
it affects everyday people, no matter what your color, your ethnicity, injustice and systems that do not allow people to live up to their full potential hurts everybody because the individual is hurt by not being able to live up to their full potential, but the society also suffers because you do not have the talent that this person could bring to problem solving. So it was just the question, can you see me now? Do you really understand what I'm trying to communicate? And that was the uh, impetus or the inspiration for this particular mixed media piece, which is, uh, has uh, the specialty papers, the Japanese papers and um, the little plastic hearts, as well as gouache paint and acrylic paint accents. One of the wonderful things about Instagram is when you see all these images of people at these different demonstrations, sometimes the posters they carry are just spot on. And I saw one young lady carrying a poster that said, if you are tired of hearing about racism, Imagine how tired we are of experiencing it. And I thought that was so on point. Again, it, it speaks to how the inability or the unwillingness of so many people to acknowledge the multi-generational harms of the past injustices, it can get exhausting after a while because you explain and you try to explain and it's just like folks just don't wanna understand. So this particular piece, was done for the Pyramid Atlantic Art Center 10 by 10 annual fundraiser. 10 by 10 is, uh, are the uh, dimensions of the artwork, 10 inches by 10 inches. And it could be a square, it could be a circle, it could be a triangle, it could be diamond shaped, but it has to be 10 by 10 inches. And each year, the uh, member artists are invited to submit artwork for this exhibition and it raised uh, each piece is sold for $50 and it raises money for Pyramid Atlantic Art Center to continue the work it does offering workshops, classes and uh, exhibitions and, and other activities. I currently have my studio at Pyramid Atlantic Art Center in Hyattsville. Uh, for those of you who might not be that familiar with Hyattsville. It's in Prince George's County. It's down the road from the University of Maryland and up the street from both uh, the uh, Hyattsville City Hall and the uh, Franklin's Brewery. Maybe some of you might be familiar with that restaurant and uh, brewery that also has a general store with all kinds of really neat gifts. So that piece was done for Pyramid Atlantic. This next piece, uh, is was created, it was one of two pieces that I created with the theme of laying on of hands. And that's because during lockdown, I joined a Facebook group of black women at home. And uh, the woman who started the Facebook group asked me if I could do a painting, uh, sort of like a logo. So I did a couple of pieces and she selected one. This was one she did not select. And uh, so I have it and uh, wanted to share it because it's, uh, again, it signifies the, the theme of this evening together again, people coming together to support each other, take care of each other, look out for each other and uh, just be good to each other. For the 2023 calendar, one of the words that uh, I'm using is diversity. Uh, last year, I asked folks who bought the calendar if they had words they wanted me to use for the upcoming calendar, and I got lots of suggestions. The diversity was one of the words, and it's, uh, for me, it, it represents, in a way, 
why I like living in Silver Spring because of the varieties of people, different ethnic groups, different cultural groups. And just, I feel sometimes like I can go around the world without leaving my community because there's so many people from so many different parts of the world. So I wanted to celebrate that in this piece for the calendar on the word diversity. Cynthia, could you tell us a little more about the uh, components of this? It's it's not just gouache or or sure. Craft. This is uh, actually this is an acrylic piece, acrylic on a, a acid-free poster board, and it is also a collage using cloth. I have a friend up in Brooklyn who is a quilter. And she has all kinds of fabric from all over the world. And so I said, do you have any scraps you don't need uh, that I I'd like to use for a painting? And she sent me a huge collection of amazing, amazing fabric from all corners of the globe. So this is just a very tiny portion of all those beautiful fabrics that she sent to me. Great. And in what countries are these from, if you recall? Well, the fabrics weren't identified by country, but I am suspecting that some of them are from Africa, some from Asia, some from India, but I could not tell you to be perfectly honest, the country of origin of each, each uh, piece of fabric. Hmm. Right. All right. One of the other words that was suggested for the calendar was B. And I was trying to figure out, well, B, what would I do with B? And it came to me, you know, we need to be the love we need, to, we want to see in the world. So I just sat down one day and just started noodling around with um, African mask motifs and ended up with this piece. It's... Um, Ink, it's India ink on watercolor paper and then gouache paint accents. We have another fellow Silver Spring artist here who, who does a lot of African masks also. I just wanted to say hello to Leslie. Leslie. Yeah. Leslie. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> Leslie. Hey, Cynthia. It's lovely. It's beautiful. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. I have to get some lessons from you. I like this gouache thing. Yeah. No. I've never used it before. Beautiful. Thank oh, you. Oh, I think you would enjoy gouache. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, this is nice. I, the, the best thing about gouache is you mix your colors, and if you are interrupted and have to step away and it dries, you just spritz them with water when you come back, and they come oh. right back to life. So mm -hmm. it's, it's very user-friendly. Friendly. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. So that brings us to the next slide that one of my favorite things in this world is eating and trying new foods. So I've done a few paintings where food is at the center. And the other thing about food and cooking and food preparation is it's a wonderful way to bring people together and to share recipes or share ideas or likes or dislikes. And then when you gather around the table, it's also a wonderful way to get to know strangers or to reinforce friendships or family relationships. So this painting is a reminder that food is a great tool for breaking down barriers. Uh, sometimes the gathering doesn't always produce the desired outcome if you have some wayward folk at the table, but nine times out of 10, you can find something that everybody can agree on, even if it's just to say, well, this is some good food. So I did this let's get cooking for celebrating food, coming together. And I'm a diehard Brooklynite, so I always like to have a brownstone somewhere in a picture 
if I'm doing something where there's a window. So that's why sometimes it'll pop up in different paintings that I do, these brownstones. Okay. Uh, that, that, there was one more. The um, thank you image isn't there. Hmm. Hmm. It did. I guess it didn't it, go through. It seems to have stopped. Yeah. Okay. Well. Let's see if I can get to it backwards now. No. No. Mm -hmm. Well, there was an image of mm -hmm. two hands outstretched saying thank you. And that was also part of the Words to Live By series because mm -hmm. it, I wanted to share that as a final image because it's a constant reminder that if we step out into the world with an attitude of gratitude each and every day, perhaps that will give us the energy and the strength to meet whatever challenges come our way. And uh, on that note, I just okay. wanna say I appreciate all of y'all taking the time this evening to spend a little time with me and happy to answer any questions you might have about any of the pieces. Thank you so much, Cynthia. Yeah. No, you're welcome. Okay, we can open up for questions and comments. Um, um, Cynthia, what year did you graduate from art and design, if you want to share? Oh, I'm class of 1972. What year did you leave? Um, I think it was 76, so. Ah, uh, so I was gone when you, by the time you got there. Yeah. Have you been back? I have not been back since they built the new building. Yeah. But that's on my list to wander over there on one of my trips to New York to see where they are and see what the school looks like now. Looks like a fortress. I didn't go on the inside, but I went by it. It's, it's a fortress. No, I'm sure all the schools are these days that are newly built. Yeah. Very nice. It was very, very nice, nice work. Thank Cindy, you. Leslie here. What made you start to do um, calendars? One of my friends, I think, said, oh, I love this. Why don't you do a calendar with these images? I think she came to one of my exhibits. And yeah, yeah. because it was there was a theme to the exhibit, she said, These, this would be great in a calendar or something like that. Yeah. And um, so I ended up, uh, I can't remember the first year that I did the calendar, uh, but I ended up pull, pulling together some of my existing images. I didn't use everything from, the, um, from that particular exhibition, but I ended up pulling together some of the other images and, and did the calendar and it sold well. So I decided, well, I'll just keep doing it. Beautiful, beautiful. I can see people, you know, buying the calendar and then cutting out these um, pictures and <laughs> framing them. <laughs> yeah, so some people do so that, well. not just with the calendar, but with the um, note cards. With the note cards, I've had yes. um, yeah. I've had folks say, "Oh, I want to get these three, these four cards because I'm going to put them together and frame yeah. them." Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's so pretty, man. Thank Be you. Beautiful. Um, did, I'm sorry. Did you explain to everybody uh, the properties of gouache earlier? Because I came a little late. Uh, gouache is an opaque water-based paint. So it's used in advertising because when it dries, it's, it's a matte finish and it reproduces well. So... Gouache can come either, it usually comes in a tube like watercolor and you just uh, thin it out to the consistency that you want. And uh, other times, I've seen it also in bottles, but normally it, it's, in, it's in a tube, just in the same section with uh, watercolor paints. Does that answer your question? Um, well, I knew that, but I didn't know if other people knew that because ah, I okay. I figured I you knew that. <laughs> okay. What? 
I started painting in gouache because I I found watercolor was so um, particular where gouache was much easier to use, you know? Well, it, it's a little bit more forgiving. Yeah. And actually with gouache, if you want to thin it out and get a watercolor effect, you can do that. But if you right. want to just have the really deep, rich color, you can, um, you, it works perfectly. One thing I didn't say about this laying on of hands uh, painting, it's actually a mixed media piece because the part down on the bottom half of the heart, all of that is uh, either tissue paper or colored paper that's been uh, wow. collaged into the piece. And do you have beads on it? it no, like those are dots. Just little dots, dots oh. of, of gold and silver oh. acrylic paint. paint. Okay. Nice. Very nice. Cynthia, um, yeah. Leslie Hare, I know you lived abroad. Um, the, uh, the living abroad influence the type of art that you did, that you do? Yes. Um, living in the tropics, because, you know, I hate winter. So I worked very hard to try to avoid going to a country that had uh, snow and ice. Although Uruguay does have winter, but it, they don't have snow and ice. But all my other assignments were in tropical countries where the sunlight just makes all colors pop. And the artists in those countries created so many amazing pieces. So I got to know artists in each country where I lived and certainly it's hard not to be influenced and inspired by what you see when you visit an artist's studio or go to a museum or an art gallery and see an exhibition of, of beautiful artwork. So yeah, definitely living in foreign countries not only influenced how I use color and how I thought about color, but also the themes and the subjects that I would uh, paint and uh, yeah, so definitely. We have a comment or question from Dana Shaw, who I know through Partners of the Americas for almost 20 years, we've been acquainted as, and friends through that group. And, and I worked with her husband, Dennis, her late husband, Dennis Shaw. Hello, Cynthia. Hello. Course, I remember you very well. Um, oh. I think from that exhibit you did had in Georgetown one time. Oh, at Paris Gallery, yeah. And, oh. and all we had just come back, in fact, from West Africa, perhaps. Uh, mm -hmm. We were in Brazil too, so your, your colors appeal to me so much. Oh, thank you, thank you. So good I to hope, see you again. I hope to pick up some notes. I've been looking for new um, things for that are appropriate for today. Mm -hmm. So thank you for your talk today. That was very inspiring. Oh, well, you're very welcome. It's my pleasure. And good luck. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us, Dana, and happy birthday to Dennis. Yes. Um, that's, that's why I thought it was kind of neat to talk. Right. Mm -hmm. We remember him fondly. Indeed. Indeed. Okay, anyone else have a comment or question for Cynthia? I think, let's see, let's scroll through here a little bit more. Um, so the, this piece you said was inspired by some of the uh, protest signs. Yeah, on Instagram, yes. I love yeah. it. Oh, this is yes. great. That is great. Yeah, that is great. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah. Great. And I was wondering about the Fourth of July reunion. Is this inspired by just the theme of Fourth of July and and family gatherings in general, or? from a particular event in your own family? 
No, it was just inspired by all the different picnics and parties that people have, uh, the get togethers that they have on July 4th. And I just wanted to do something, uh, uh, I think at the time in 2006, there were some, uh, I think they used to have this black family reunion on the mall during, I can't remember at what time of year they had, I don't, it wasn't around 4th of July, but during the summertime at some point, and I think I, that might've been what inspired that piece. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, great. I also and love the, the yarn since, shop. <laughs> since I crochet, um, this this piece was done to uh, celebrate a yarn shop that doesn't exist anymore. It was on Atlantic Avenue in Brooklyn, not far from where my sister lives. And uh, the woman who owned it had been there for many years and they would, she would host uh, a master knitter and crocheter who would invite people to just bring whatever uh, projects they were working on that they might need help with. A uh, wonderful lady named Tatiana from Russia who worked in the garment district for many, many years designing uh, all kinds of fabulous knitwear and crochet as well. So she would hold court as it were in this yarn shop and it was floor to ceiling cubicles filled with all kinds of yarn, different colors, different textures, different weights. And it was just a wonderful gathering spot in the community. Unfortunately, due to gentrification the, uh, and the increase in property values, the, the rent, the, the, the owner raised the rent and it was just too expensive for the owner to continue there. So she, she had to move and she moved to a different location, but it did not do well. And so she just closed up shop. So it was um, my little uh, tribute to Knit Away Brooklyn that was such a special place that no longer exists and sort of emblematic of, of what happens, you know, it's part of life. There's always change and now there is a, a, a pet hotel in the space where the yarn shop used to be. Mm. Wow, interesting. Well, I'm, gl I'm glad you have this homage to the memory of it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's great. Um, and then this, tell us again, this introductory piece, um, Mighty Pretty Meeting by the Waterside. What location is it inspired this one? Well, my very first overseas assignment was in uh, Abidjan, Cote d'Ivoire. And I lived in a, an apartment building right across from the lagoon. And then later on, I served in Panama. And many of my friends lived in an area that bordered the Pacific Ocean. So all of these different locations with uh, beautiful uh, trees and lush landscape and then interspersed are the concrete structures. That's what basically inspired that, uh, this particular painting. Mm -hmm. And since I was doing spirituals, I, uh, decided to use it as an opportunity for one of these baptisms that often in the tropics, they just go down to the waterside and do the baptisms there rather than in a baptismal pool in a church when they do the full immersion baptisms. Mm -hmm. Cynthia, the, the person in the water, I'm just mm -hmm. seeing it now, is the person being baptized, eh? Yeah, there's a there's yes. a, the preacher who is uh -huh. preacher, has yeah. his hands raised, and then there's somebody in the water with him. Right. Yeah. So all the people in white are the ones who are going to get baptized. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So these these songs, um, the whole series of uh, spirituals, my father sang. He uh, after Mr. Robeson retired from performing. His arranger and accompanist, Lawrence Brown, continued to work. He 
part of his passion was keeping these songs alive and working with any young uh, musician who wanted to sing them. So my father met him and I don't know the, I don't know how, but when my father passed away, we went through some of his uh, music books and sheet music and things and interspersed throughout all, in all of this was a, a program, a tribute done to um, Paul Robeson at the Americana Hotel in New York City. And when I opened it up, I see the program has Ossie Davis and Ruby Dee as the master and mistress of ceremony. And then they list all of the performers, folks like Billy Taylor and Pete Seeger. And my father, Arthur Farrell's name is listed as the performer, one of the performers. So I suspect that's where he may have met Lawrence Brown, who was uh, Mr. Robeson's arranger and accompanist. And they started working together and performing together um, around New York and, and beyond. So. I grew up listening to them rehearse in our living room and just loved hearing these songs. So that's what inspired this series because I wanted to pay tribute to my father, to Mr. Robeson and to Mr. Brown. Great. And what instrument did your dad, he was a he singer? Sang. He was a bass yeah. baritone. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he sang and he studied music. He took voice lessons and he was a voice for hire in different uh, churches in New York City in addition to singing in his own church mm -hmm. and uh, his day job was as a printer and his passion was the music and so when I showed an interest in visual arts he didn't discourage it all he said was that's fine uh, you should study this if that's what you want to study, but you need to get a job that gives you a good pension. He was very practical. Great. Okay. And so and he, did you he inherit encouraged all of all of my sisters, there are three of us, and he encouraged all of us to not just have careers, but to also have some other out creative outlet. Mm -hmm. And and did you also inherit inherit his his wonderful singing voice? Well, I sang to my children. I sang them to sleep. <laughs> and when I was younger, I did sing in the choir for a little bit. But um, no, I just focused more on the visual arts than on the music. But I am an appreciator of music. And mm. I enjoy listening to good music. Mm. Yes, definitely so. Oh, great. And you, you also did a jazz series um, of yes. artwork. Yes, that I did a series. And that was thanks to a grant from the Arts and Humanities Council of Montgomery County. And uh, the focus on uh, that was different jazz artists and how their um, certain songs, specific songs had influenced me one way or the other or inspired me one way or the other but I don't have any of those images here in this slideshow, but there's some on, on the website. Hmm. Well, great, yeah. So what are you, what is, um, your, what are your current works that you're, you're doing now, projects you're doing, pieces? Well, as I said, I, I'm working on the images for the 2023 calendar, and actually I've already done the note card, I mean the, um, the one page calendar. I do a 12 month calendar and I do one page calendars. And I do, here I've already done the, I've already done the um, one pager with uh -huh. uh, some of the images that will be in the 12 month calendar. And this one be the love that you wanna see it that you want to okay yeah so that you, yeah if you could hold up the calendar again now that i yeah, have there you go. photo enlarged okay great so i've already done these and now i'm working on the 12 month plant calendar and uh, the last image i just finished the last image for the the 12 month calendar and it's this one a variation on that fourth of july but this one is a little bit different. Is that Thanksgiving, November? Yep. Uh -huh. yep, yep, yep. 
And the theme for this one is community. Uh -huh. And mm -hmm. community basically starts with you. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's what I'm working on now. I uh, also have a piece that I've just completed for the um, city of Gaithersburg. And um, as soon as their new building is completed, I will, it, I'll deliver the art to them and I, I can let folks know. Mm -hmm. 16 Summit is the address. I guess Summit Avenue in Gaithersburg. Great, wow. So other, other projects that I've worked on this year, I had a commission to create a poster, poster art for an opera. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, that was, uh, the, the theme is the Br'er Rabbit story. And so they performed that opera in Norfolk uh, first weekend of June. So I went down to see it and see the, uh, the promotional poster that they did, uh, that they created with my artwork. So those are the kinds of things I've been working on this year. Great. And could you tell us a little about how uh, COVID impacted your work over the last couple of years, if, if it affected it in any way? Well, yeah, it, it did because of um, being at home or in the studio, you have more time to focus on like I said, projects that had been languishing, that had been set aside and all of a sudden I had more time um, available to, to work on them. So that was one of the things that um, happened during COVID that a lot of projects that had just been languishing, I started working on and was able to complete. It was uh, unusual time because of course, You've, we were limited in, in what we could do and how we could engage with other people. But because of website and Instagram and Facebook, every now and then I would have uh, communication with somebody who wanted to buy something or who was interested in finding out about a piece. So it wasn't a total cutoff, but it certainly did limit what one could do. And so there was also time to do a lot more reading. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I mean, I, I noticed a big difference. The visual artists were, many of them were able to thrive during this period of isolation compared to musicians who, oh, yeah. who kind of rely on being in person and collaborating yeah. and having an audience and that kind of feedback from the audience. So, Generally, in some ways, artists uh, there were more. There was more funding, maybe, for people to buy art as well. I know a lot of artists who sold more than they did before, which was great. Yeah, so, but it, it's true that uh, I, as a visual artist, I felt like there there's a lot I could do even if I couldn't be face to face. Whereas mm -hmm. friends of mine who were musicians or in the theater, it was just devastating. Right, right. Great. Well, this, this has been great, Cynthia. We, we greatly appreciate you and all your work. And Cynthia also was a board member of SSTCI for some years and graduated. She used to host our art salon, which we do quarterly, I encourage those of you along the creative spectrum to join us sometime. The next art salon is uh, the, uh, 13th of July, Wednesday. And we're meeting in person at El Golfo prior to our performance that evening on the patio. We'll be on the patio. So we're, we're trying to be together again in person, but in safe ways with some limited indoor events, but mostly outdoor events during the summer and a few Zoom sessions like this. Which, which work well for looking at art. So thank you so much, Cynthia. It's been, it's been a pleasure as always. And we, we look forward to seeing more of your work and we put your, your website in the chat. So- Thank you. Uh, one last thing I would say is with fingers crossed, 
maybe, maybe, maybe I will be moving my studio from Hyattsville to Silver Spring. So if and when that occurs, I will let you know. I'll let Great. everybody know. And you know, hopefully we can go in person. I feel it be beside me, or is it is it beside? Oh, there's one person. We're next us. to each other. Next Leslie and other. I will have studios next to each other. Oh, well, that will be a fun spot to be in. <laughs> <laughs> a very Indeed. creative fun. hub, right there, in one yeah. little space. Yeah. Well, great. When is, when is that supposed to happen? In the fall? Finally, opening or is it still delayed? It's delayed because of COVID. It's, we have no idea. But we are hopeful that it will be sometime in 2023. Let's put it that way. Okay. <laughs> 2023. Because we I'm giving up on 2022. Last year, April. We would be moving in in June last year. Yeah. Right. So I, I, I would love it if we we're in there by fall of 2022. Yes. But if not, then <laughs> hopefully in the new year. Oh, yeah. Because we've been promised and promised yes, and so we don't, we don't delay, believe. delay. So we, we're really not sure at this point. We don't believe anything they tell us. So <laughs> when they tell us, come, come sign the lease. Yes, that's the time we believe them. Yeah, we'll have a big party when we move in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So thanks, everybody, for showing up. And